Hey everybody and welcome to another edition of What's Been Hitting My Table. So this instalment is for the first half of December 2021 and if you don't know what this series is about it's all about the games that have been hitting my table that I've been playing and these are all games that are older and that I've played before so all the new games to me are done in an individual video. And um, Before I get started on the games that I've been playing and there's a lot of them um, or at least a lot of variety of them um, I want to give a shout out to kienda.co.uk who are my go-to online retailer in the UK but let's get started on the game. So first off as you can see here I've been playing some more Skull. So I played a five player game of Skull. This is a very clever bluffing game with a lot of nuance, a lot of psychology that goes into it as you're basically choosing to put these coasters either face down, um, sorry, the coasters with a, with a flower on them or with a skull on them. And then you're kind of almost coaxing players into um, saying that they can claim a certain amount of coasters that they can flip over without revealing a skull. And that's pretty much all the rules are. However, there is, again, more psychology that goes into that than, than, than might first kind of appear. Um, and, I, you know, normally I'm a very conservative player. I take my time. I like to, you know, play things safe. Um, but, you know, I took a real balls to the wall approach on this one and it ended up paying up. I got down to my final coaster um, and everybody knew it was a safe coaster, but... Um, I still managed to get that second that second success and ended up winning the game. But really enjoying this one. And I can see this one even getting a shield of quality um, if I keep playing it and keep enjoying it as much as I am. So that is Skull. I've also been playing um, a really um, kind of an old old and golden game. This is uh, The Hobbit Love Letter. In fact, I played the, the normal Love Letter, the kind of Renaissance one. Um, this one... Very simple micro games. You're trying to survive as long as you can, um, trying to eliminate other players, um, or trying to be the the last person standing with the the princess, or in the Hobbit version, the the Ark and Stone. Um, really simple, um, kind of take that ish, which is normally not my kind of thing. Um, but I say if there's ever a game that's um, that's got some nostalgic value or some again some sentimental value to me, it's probably the Love Letter because this one is a game we've played a ton as a group. Um, I will say that I think the kind of dividends and the enjoyment I'm getting back from it is diminished quite quickly now and it really is just kind of going through the motions and just um, using it as a literal filler game. Um, so I still think it's okay um, but certainly don't enjoy it as much as I did and it's just it's just all right just to um, eat a bit of time but we had a we had a very Quick game of this one. Um, I did terribly. I don't think I got a single point, but hey, it's um it's become a bit of a tradition for us to play uh, Love Letter. Also, I've been playing some more Viceroy. Uh, Viceroy, this one is just an absolutely gem, uh, absolute gem of a game, as you're building this massive uh, pyramid of cards. Um, and these all have different abilities on them, depending on the level you build them on. Um, and you, sometimes you're lining up these uh, these gemstones and getting more income. Because it's a bidding game, you're basically bidding to get these cards um, simultaneously with the other players. If you bid the same, then you're going to have to keep going again and again and uh, potentially waste your currency. Love the different strategies and paths to victory in this one. Um, I took a very heavy scroll approach to get these multipliers. Um, and I believe my opponent took more of a kind of a, a tall approach, trying to get as much as they can on higher levels. Um, but yeah, really good game, nice tight outcome. And um, I think this one is such a good uh, kind of versatile game to cater to get more Euro gamers, but still being very uh, kind of gateway friendly. So this one is going to go from strength to strength. And again, if you like those medium lightweight Euros with a lot going on, loads of different things to try, then Viceroy is certainly one to look at. So yeah, loving that one. I uh, also got a, a little game called Pungi and back to the table. So this one was on my last uh, month's uh, month in review. Uh, this one is a very simple card game as you're trying to basically bid to take these different cards with points on them. Sometimes they're negative points and sometimes you can convert those points into positive points. Um, can, as simple as it gets, you know, very light, but there is some quite clever hand management and card play with this one. Um, but I think it does have a bit of a glass ceiling. Um, I had a very successful game with this one. I think I, I won quite comfortably, but um, but yeah, it's okay. I mean, if it's, it's relatively cheap, you can probably pick it up for literally just a few pounds. Um, and, you know, if you want something a bit different for a filler game, then maybe give it on a look. Um, kind of, I, I described it as almost like a trick-taking for sale um, crossover, but it works, it works pretty decently. I've also been playing some more land, oh sorry, air, land and sea. Uh, this one is a kind of tug of war, um, one versus one, so a strictly two-player game, as you're trying to compete over these different theatres of war by playing cards. Um, and I love the way that all these cards are merged together. So this is another micro game, a bit like Love Letter, where you have very few components. I think there's only 18 cards in the game. Um, and you have six each. 
and you're just basically trying to play these cards in a certain order in the in the right places in order to get the most out of them. But one of my favourite things about this game is the uh, victory system, where if you if you uh, think things aren't going well, you can choose to back out of the fight and end up giving fewer points to your opponent rather than fighting to the bitter end and losing that way and potentially giving a whole bunch. Um, we've got a bit of a... I've been playing this with my mum and we've got a bit of a running joke because she seems to always do or start extremely strongly. Um, I think she was 9-0 up and the objective is to get to 12 points and I ended up coming back and winning um, from yeah from 0 points um, down. Uh, sorry, from 9 points down. And um, yeah, that's happened twice in a row now. So um, this is such a wonderful game and um, it really is um, becoming one of my favourite two-player games. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I've also been playing a two-player game of uh, Savannah Park. Um, probably my least successful game so far of this one. Um, didn't do very well at all. Uh, at least it didn't feel I did. Um, I think I maybe did better than I thought I was going to do. Um, but this one, um, this is a, a pretty much brand new Kramer and Keeslin game if you haven't heard of it. Uh, very family friendly as you're just juggling around all these tiles trying to put them, these animals in groups together um, and get bigger multipliers. As simple as it gets. Very puzzly um, but I think it's an absolute joy to play and um, I, I don't see this one leaving my collection anytime soon. Um, just It's just a real easy game to get to the table, get it played and just have fun um, almost instantaneously. So yeah, that's Savannah Park. Um, what more could you expect from Kramer and Keesling? Also finally managed to get a game of Fium uh, done. So another two player game of Fium uh, with my brother. Uh, this one I've been wanting to get to the table for ages. It's been right at the top of my queue to, uh, to get back to the table. As you can see, this is a Freedom and Freeze game that came out last year. Um, to very little fanfare, didn't really get much buzz at all. And um, I'm quite, uh, I'm quite confused why. I mean, I, maybe I can see because of the aesthetic and things. Um, the board here looks terrible, but it looks better in person. Uh, this one is such an interesting game. One of the most unique games in my collection. And I will say, the more I'm playing this one, I think it's getting better and better uh, as you get over those weird things that the game does. Because the scoring in this game is quite, um, is quite uh, esoteric. It's quite different. You don't really see any other games use this kind of scoring system. Um, and the idea is this game, you're basically trying to play these cards and build up a almost like a civilization on the map by building roads and, and new buildings and towns and farms and stuff. But you're doing that all communally. So sometimes when you build stuff, you leave opportunities to other players to capitalize on. Um, and uh, it's all based on this card system that's very similar to Concordia, where you want to play things, but you can't you can't play another card again until you pick them all back up. However, this one has even tighter restrictions where if you um, if you choose to take all your cards back, you can, you can only take the top three back and then you have to end up spending more and more to pick up more and more cards. So very clever, very tight management, hand management system. Um, and I just love that puzzle, knowing when to ditch things, knowing when to bury cards. Um, I, I will say that um, my, one of my biggest issues with this game was how long it took, because it does take a couple of hours, but there is a brilliant um, variant or a house rule you can do when, when you kind of refresh and do the housekeeping phase to get rid of three cards from the card row rather than the standard two. Um, it makes game, the game go a lot quicker and it felt just right for me, but I uh, absolutely love it. Uh, this one is just brilliant and um, I think I'm going to feature this one on my rating changes to move it up, um, which I'll talk about on a, on a future video. But uh, if you want weird games, you like Concordia, you like um, the kind of power grid card system, but it still feels very different to those games, then Fime is certainly one to check out. Um, really enjoying that one. Uh, polar opposite to a game like Fime, I've been playing some more Can't Stop. So this is probably chronologically one of the oldest games in my collection. Uh, this was a very simple push your luck game as you're trying to climb these... Um, these columns of numbers. So you've got like the um, two to 12, a seven being the most common, um, obviously because you're rolling two, two dice. Um, and the more you roll these numbers, you're trying to climb up, but whenever you don't roll one of these numbers, you can go bust. Um, a bit like um, a bit like Skull, I took a very a very brave approach, just thought, let's go for it, and it ended up winning my first game of Can't Stop, um, because normally I do terribly in this game, um, because I go, uh, I just end up keep going bust and bust and bust, but this finally paid off for me. Um, but a really nice, um, a really nice pushy luck game, uh, very family friendly again. Um, maybe it takes a little bit longer than I would like, but other than that, it's a, it's a joy to play. I've uh, also been playing some more modern art. Um, so I think this is actually the only Knizia game I've played uh, uh, so far this month. Um, so that's probably a, a change of pace. So this one is uh, another auction game. Uh, this one you're buying art. Um, and you're paying, basically paying the other players when they're the auctioneer and auction off 
auctioning off this art. I've um, got a very cool scoring system as only th the three most popular artists end up scoring money in the first place um, and that kind of accumulates as the game goes on but I don't want to go into too much detail about how the rules work um, but I think this game works really well. I played it at three players which um, I think maybe the sweet spot's four players but three works just fine. Um, I love the flow of money in this one um, and it's just a, a real fun game you can get played in about half an hour to 45 minutes. And it's kind of always a crowd pleaser because it's so dynamic. That is modern art. I've also been playing some more Capital Lux 2. So I've just got my review of this one out. Uh, and I think this one, you know, talking about my um, my month in review, this one came number one last month. I'm absolutely blown away with this clever card game. Um, one of the best, oh yeah, one of the best scoring systems I, I think I've seen. Um, one of the tightest and crunchiest card games that I've played, while still being really low in terms of its rules overhead. Um, as you're trying to build up a, a bunch of cards in front of you, but balance that with the city or the capital. Um, because if you ever go higher in your town than the than the city itself then you can go bust and end up losing a whole bunch of points um, but the variability of this game is great just so many different ways to play it and uh, but that core system is just absolutely amazing so this is uh, again if you like card games this is one to check out and I just just go check out my review because I do really gush over this one and I uh, give it my highest kind of commendation so um, anytime I'll play this one I'll probably try to play this one as often as I can um, but yeah loving it still and that's not going to change anytime soon and the final game um, I played in the first half of this month is one of my favourite games of all time. This is Concordia. So um, Concordia, I played a two-player game of Concordia using the Italy map. So that's the uh, the core base map on the on the tighter side. Um, I played this one um, with my mate who really wanted to uh, get it back to the table um, because we hadn't played it in quite a while, despite being one of my favourite games. Um, in fact, one of my top 10 games of all time. Um, and yeah, we got it back to the table and I didn't do too well, so I ended up losing a, a game of this one. Um, normally my record is quite good in, um, in Concordia. I took a very heavy Saturn approach, which is trying to get into all the different regions. Um, so I managed to do that, got some really good multipliers, but without realizing that my opponent was kind of stepping under the radar, getting bigger multipliers by visiting lots of different cities. Um, what a joy to play. I love how opaque the scoring is. Uh, you really can't see who's going to win until that very end. And um, that will, that's what really keeps me coming back to Concordia. And it keeps you invested from start to finish. Um, brilliant game, um, one of the best Euros ever made. That is Concordia. So um, that just concludes uh, this uh, video. So we've got quite a few games there. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video and I, I enjoy talking about these because it keeps um, keeps all these experiences fresh in my mind and it's always nice to talk about old games rather than just what I'm always playing new. So if you have enjoyed the video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos too. And for everyone else, I'll see you next time on Chairman of the Board.